Hey, welcome to the Backwoods Gourmet. I'm excited today because we got in the new Blacklock 12 inch skillet from Lodge. Today we're going to unbox it, take a really good look at it, compare it to some of the older cast iron we have, and we're going to cook a breakfast in one skillet meal for you. So y'all stay tuned. So this came uh, direct to us from uh, Lodge Manufacturing Company right there in South Pittsburgh, Tennessee. As far as I've uh, been able to, to find, uh, that's the only place you can get the Blacklock series right now. They probably have it in their store there at the factory, um, but otherwise you're going to have to go to LodgeMFG.com. Uh, and it, even when you get to their website, it's, uh, it's a bit difficult to find it. I, I had a little trouble finding it on the website. It's not, not really featured up there very prominently yet. So maybe a soft roll out, but we got the, as usual, box inside of a box. Most stuff I get from them is the same way. Now let's uh, take a look on the inside. And you know, this is their uh, triple seasoned, lighter weight uh, product and uh, they asked me um, what pieces I would like to, to review, and since I oh, currently only have one 12 inch old lodge skillet, this is the one I picked, along with the griddle. If you haven't seen that video, um, I'm gonna leave you a card right up top and a link in the description box back to our review of the Blacklock griddle. Now, it's got this uh, little label in here with the same kind of, that rubber band kind of glue. You want to make sure you get all that up when you take it out. All right, well, first thing I notice about it is the handles. It's been redesigned here. It's much thinner, okay, and much longer. And uh, it still has the gripper end over here, and that's much thinner and, and longer also. It is definitely lighter than, um, you know, a 12-inch regular lodge pan. So let me bring the cameras in. I'm gonna give you a closer look at the interior finish. All right, so the interior finish, again, uh, is not, it's not smooth, okay? Um, it's still got the molded sand finish. The difference here is, is they put three coats of their seasoning on it and that's helped to fill in. So, uh, so here's my old antique three notch lodge. You see the three notches in the ring under the bottom here definitely identifies it as a lodge. This one gets a lot of use and most of the roughness in the bottom of this one is just the roughness in the seasoning. Um, but let's, uh, let's give it the old spatula test because I know my mic um, picks up spatula against this cast iron very well. I mean, you guys are always commenting about it. But uh, low angle, like I would be flipping something. This is the old one and this is the new one. So hopefully that demonstrates the difference. So if you're expecting to get this black lock and it to look like the old stuff, it ain't happening. But they did keep the poor spouts. That's a good thing. Let's set this one back aside because I want to try this out with the lodge lid. So here I have my uh, my lodge 12 inch lid that I, fits my other skillet perfectly. Fits this one pretty well also. Let's see uh, if there's a difference in how tight it fits. Much tighter on the old antique, much tighter. No, There's no wiggle, no wobble, okay? I put it on here, still fits in there fine, but it's a little slop. It's gonna work fine, believe me, that's, that's not gonna be an issue. Just doesn't fit quite as, uh, this is thinner, you know, a little bit thinner. And it's got like a little bevel. There's a little bevel on the edge. Also, the other differences I've noticed um, is the sides are actually kind of curved. They're, they got a little curve to them, whereas the old pan pretty much curves and comes straight up, or straight up at an angle. So that's probably gonna be uh, good for to help you if you wanna do, you know, chef style where you're tossing a veg or something like that. 
Now, um, the other thing I want to show you difference right up front was the, the difference in the handles. And you see much longer. This, I know this 12 inch pan doesn't have the, the part to pick up over here. So you load this baby down, it, it can get pretty, it can get pretty challenging to hold that thing with that little stubby, you know, shorter handle like that. If you got a lot of ingredients in there, like when we do a chicken cacciatore or something like that. Um, I mean, you gotta really use some wrist strength there. Now this one here is, uh, is longer, but I do notice that it's, uh, it's very thin. If I can pick that up on camera, see how thin that is. Um, you definitely don't want to drop this thing. Um, you know, they've taken a lot of weight out of it, and they have improved that handles probably design a bit, but it's a bit sharp on the edges too. Um, right where the mold, I guess, came apart. Uh, I think they could have probably done a little better. They, they did grind it in some places. I can see right here where they ground it a little bit, but a little more attention to detail there. I may have to take a, I may have to take a sander to it right there because I got a pretty sharp spot right in here. Let me see if I can get the uh, camera in real close for that. You can see that sharp edge right there. So I think we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and use it before we season it again, for the first time that we season it. We're going to take a we're going to take a little flap wheel with a little 80 grit flap wheel on an angle grinder, and we're going to go ahead and take that that little burr off. And I'm going to actually hit it over here on this side too because you can feel where the mold came together, and it, it left a little burry edge there that they. They failed to remove at the factory. That might show it best right there in that light. You see that little edge that's sharp to your to your touch. Okay. So you seen that little issue we had there with the handle. So what I did was I shot over a quick video to the folks over at Lodge. Uh, Jody Lawrence, she's a social media manager. I sent that to her. She immediately forwarded that on to customer care and actually to the production manager. Um, over at Lodge, Kelly Peterson. So, the, I, they actually called me today and said, the video you shot us really, you know, and sent to us really pointed out something we weren't aware of. So, I had a long conversation with her today. They went back through their entire inventory of these Blacklock pans and checked every one of them personally, okay, to make sure that the one you get it's not going to have the issues that we have. And uh, they're also going back through their, uh, the, the person who runs the entire foundry in the process of manufacturing to see how they can improve uh, this back in the, in the manufacturing process before it ever gets seasoned. So rest assured, when you get your brand new Blacklock skillet, it's not going to have the same issues that we had with the handle. That is some great customer service right there. Inside, I don't see any flaws in it at all. All right, uh, let's look at the bottom side. Got the Black Clock, uh, South Pittsburgh, Tennessee, molded in. This is piece 39. We got that new Black Clock in there. and Got it in the house, some nice uh, Corona Duche cast iron soap. I uh, recommend it. It really works well, and it don't strip seasoning out of your pans. Um, so we got it cleaned up, dried off, Today we're going to put it over on a propane burner and cook up a one skillet breakfast. Don't go nowhere guys. Alright, so the pan's warmed up now and since it is very first cook on this, I'm going to go ahead and give it about a teaspoon of uh, vegetable oil. I'm just going to run it around in there with my spatula. I'm going to just tilt it. Alright, now we're coming over with some bacon. We're going to cut 
chopped up a thick sliced bacon. Let that start going. So I'm gonna see how how non-stick it is right out of the box here. I'm going to leave you a list of the ingredients in this uh, at the end of the video. So if you want to go down and uh, done watching the video, you can just pause it there and all the ingredients are going to roll and it's not that many. I'm getting that started. I got some, some uh, breakfast sausage if I can get it out. I want to start chopping that up. Alright, we're just going to brown this off and then we're going to put, start putting in our veg. Okay, you can see that's mostly browned off. So I'm going to go ahead and add in, uh, it's about two cups of uh, chopped potatoes. Now these were actually frozen steak fries that I diced up. You can obviously use your raw potato. These won't take as long because they are partially cooked before they're frozen. So they, they, they work good for this dish because it doesn't take as long to cook. And uh, today we're going to use our favorite is uh, Seminole Swamp Seasoning and this is the Fire in a Swamp flavor. Uh, awesome on stuff like this, especially potatoes and that gets good on everything. I ain't found anything it ain't good on. Alright. Yeah, that lid fits. It's, it's not the tightest thing in the world, but it does cover it. giving those potatoes a little head start there going in with some red onion and some green onion those are both from our garden I'm gonna give them a good stir down in there our potatoes have kind of absorbed all the oil from the sausage and bacon a little bit they put in but begin with started out with those frozen french fries those are almost done. All right, so we're just gonna let them onions cook there a minute, and then I'm gonna put some peppers and onion or some uh, some bell peppers over on my side because if you watch me and all, you know this is backwards. So you don't like no peppers. bell peppers go ahead and stay to the right. Get in just a little bit of a tablespoon of water. Since we start out with them frozen french fries and get much moisture out of them. Basting tips. All right, we gotta turn it one last time. But I gotta keep all these peppers and stuff over here. Ah. 
just a little stick down in there, but not 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 bad at all. Not especially with the amount of potatoes we got in there. I did want to make sure this burner does have a hot spot on it now. It's getting pretty old. I cook on this thing constantly. I got kind of a hot spot in the back back there, so kind of got to remember to keep moving the uh, skillet around. So we'll go ahead and give it another tablespoon of water. The lid back on for just a minute, and we'll put in our eggs. So far, that is the third ingredient that we have uh, provided from our little tiny suburban micro farm here. The fresh eggs from our chickens. Now to help these go along, that little bit of steam is going to help too. So let's go ahead and just dribble just a little bit around the edges and get that lid back on real quick. And that helps cook them on the top. What I totally forgot was more Seminole Swamp season, but on top of them eggs. Yum. Taking a peek. Yeah, a few more. All right, guys, when those eggs look like that for me, it's ready to pull off. time for the plate backwards gourmet style now it's pretty much a tradition around here that mrs. Uh, backwards gets the display plate and so we're gonna go in there on the side that didn't have any of them red and green peppers and yes I, I am using a metal spatula Everybody's always wanting us to taste our food on the camera, so let's go in and give it a try. Wow. Seminole Swamp season, fire and swamp. Just a tiny bit of heat in it. Just the right amount of salt. Really, really. Oh, man, it makes it. Let's see how we deal on them eggs. Yeah, buddy. Mm. So if you've never tried this before, break out your 12-inch skillet with the lid, and you can do it anywhere, even, even at camp over a campfire. So if you like what we're doing, please hit that like button right down there, and don't forget about our Amazon store. I'm going to leave you the link in the first comment and the description box below. Anything you buy there at Amazon doesn't cost you a dime more, but we make a little commission on it. Help us buy the ingredients we need to keep bringing more great videos to you. So what was my overall impression uh, with the first use of the new Black Lock 12-inch cast iron pan? Uh, I really liked it. It didn't stick at all. It cleaned up very well, but just with a cast iron brush and hot water. Uh, I didn't I didn't use any anything else on it, and I normally don't. Uh, normally, I have to get them pretty hot and then put the water in there to get stuff out this one didn't stick at all if you like what we're doing please smash that like button right down there to subscribe to our channel you can do it right there to see another great backwards gourmet video it's gonna be right there if our whole playlist cast iron dutch oven cooking gonna be right up there we'll see y'all next time